The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and a little bit of a different pickup right now. It's the uh, second trading day of December. Friday kicked things off. We finished in dramatically higher prices, 4607 that price point on the S&Ps. And where are we trading right now? Negative by about 6 tenths percent. We're off by 30 points right now. We just got a little bit of an acceleration even in the last hour as the S&Ps are off by 30 points. NASDAQ 100. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see the volatility in both directions. And yeah, we're pushing the lows of Thursday. We're pushing the lows of Friday. You get the NASDAQ 100 off about eight tenths percent. You got gold off by half a percent, 36,136. And the Russell just barely off by one point, but we're as high as one percent higher on the Russell. Now, the story of the day could be gold. We'll see how things go, man. Gold got a spike last night to 2152. I was talking to my dad early this morning. We had a nice pool day with grandpa yesterday. And yeah, he was saying, I don't know, we'll see how today goes, man. Not exactly the strongest. Um, and I'll let him talk for himself this afternoon, right? But just saying, geez, you know, they, they pushed it up. They took out all those stops. It was up $60. You know, really not when the market was open. Just that first acceleration for 6 o'clock when the futures opened. By the time it was 9 o'clock, the move was already gone. And we're actually below that price point right now. We'll see if it carries through, but nonetheless, that is quite a price point for the price of gold, 2152. Now, it's interesting. You got gold, and what else do you got? You got Bitcoin, man. Bitcoin, holding on to the gains. How about 42,000 for Bitcoin? Now, you put this thing on a weekly. Absolutely remarkable when you think about, I mean, what saved the market? Do you remember what saved the market? A banking crisis. What saved Bitcoin? A Ponzi crisis. Pretty remarkable, man. Bitcoin, 42,000. We're coming up to the highs of last year, 48,475 Bitcoin. Quite an acceleration. Back to crude. Chopping around in the 70s. Let's put it back to a 10-minute, five-minute chart. Why not? You trade lower on Thursday. You trade lower on Friday. We're below that price level. Off by 70 pennies crude. 73.37, the price of crude. You jump to notes and bonds. A little bit of lower price and higher yield. You get the 10-year right now, 4.26%. 4.26% 4 the yield on the 10-year. You're off by 11 ticks. The 30-year is off by 16 ticks. We jump over to the dollar index. The dollar index this morning. Yeah, pay attention to this one, man, because you keep seeing the dollar doing this, you're going to keep seeing the market go to red. And look at this action right now that we're getting, man. The dollar, 103.60 almost, 103.57. We were just at 103.30 at 8 in the morning. And that's uh, putting a hurting on gold, though, right? You see the relationship with gold pulling that back. You get a strong dollar. I don't know. We'll see how that all plays out. And if that's the relationship that holds today. Because it's been quite an hour. It's been quite an overnight session. And the market's given up some of the gains as we come into Jobs Week. We get non-farm payrolls kicking things off on Friday. We get a Fed meeting a week from this Wednesday. Pretty interesting. I know I'm still a little stuffed up. I feel great. Uh, just getting over a little head cold. A little stuffed up every morning. I'm gonna take a little sip of coffee. All right. All right. Where are we gonna kick things off? Let's kick it off with outer space. Let's kick it off with a little le uh, a lesson in patience. I don't know what it's a lesson in, but it's a lesson in uh, being careful in the markets, man. So Virgin Galactic. They're trading lower after Branson rules out further investment, okay? Boy, they should do a movie about this one. They probably will. Uh, maybe maybe we can get some tigers and tigresses to write the script itself. Uh, excuse me. There's the article. Come on. We got ads everywhere. Now, so this was in an interview with the Financial Times published Sunday that Branson said his business empire no longer has the deepest pockets in the wake of the COVID-19. He stretched, folks. Uh, Branson, he stretched. Virgin Investments remains the second largest shareholder in Virgin Galactic, 7.7% holding besides state, behind State Street Global with 843 Now, what I will say is he didn't 
sell out like everybody else. Wasn't it Chamath? I'm going to pull this up at some of the break, man. Because didn't Chamath, the SPAC king, I mean, I'm pretty sure he sold like immediately when this thing was at all time highs practically. Yeah, they're in tough shape. I mean, be careful. Okay, I remember when this thing, you know, they pushed Branson. And do you remember when? Do you remember when the 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 billionaire race to space was on? Pretty remarkable times we were living in, man. This thing goes from nothing to a spac to sixty to eighty to challenging that high up to fifty seven fifty one when the market was on fire in two thousand twenty one, and just like that, we're trading under two dollars. Uh, yeah, be careful, man. And you go over. So what is this company valued at right now? Under a billion dollars is what this company is valued at right now. Pretty remarkable when you think about being on the frontier of space. Be careful of those SPACs. Be careful of everything. Be careful of Chamath. I'm going to pull up some of the articles about him dumping. I wonder what he, price he got because it was wild stuff being a founder in these companies and just dumping everything ASAP as they went public. All right, what else we got? Let's talk a little bit of gold, right? Gold soars past 2100 to a new record. And analysts don't expect it to stop there. My dad's been talking about 2,500. He's a little bit skittish about the way it just made that high, right? If you are like super bullish on gold, it would make sense that you don't want it to cherry pick some high at 6.05 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday night when the future's open. You're probably looking for a lot of strength throughout the trading day, indicating real strength in that market. Nonetheless, it's higher prices, man. We'll see how today plays out as we got volatility everywhere. Um, but yeah, we're pushing to all time highs. 2110 per point eighty per month per excuse me, per ounce on Monday before giving up some of those gains. It's actually back to negative prices right now. And yeah, so keep your eye on this market, boy. Today's gonna be an interesting one with the S P's kind of accelerating to lower prices. Look at this gold contract. I mean, you had gold up sixty dollars and now it's down twenty dollars. Folks, today is Monday. My dad's going to have a new issue of the Gold Report. If you haven't signed up for it yet, if you're thinking about signing up for the Gold Report, if you're thinking about resubscribing, you're a subscriber in the past, great time to do it. New issue Monday. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not happy with it. And, boy, we get some volatility in gold. And, yeah, you take a longer-term picture of gold, man. Right? What have we been doing? We've been pushing the highs for three years. You make a high in when, folks? When? 2011. 2011, 12 years ago, more than 12 years ago, it's the middle, September of 2011, you get back up to that high right after COVID in the middle of 2020, you consolidate for three years and we have now broken above for all time highs. Gold made all time highs in the last 24 hours. Check out the gold report, folks. Why not? Today's a great time to do it when you got gold making all time highs. And with that, we are now down almost $90 from those all-time highs. When do, how often do you get to say that? Boy, my dad, he's got this market peg, man. When I was talking to him at 7, 8 this morning, gold's already down $25 from there. He was a little skittish in my head. I was like, well, you know, it's not that bad, right? Experience is everything sometimes, folks. Uh, we'll see where today plays out with the S&Ps off 32. NASDAQ 100 off by 145 right now. That's 9 tenths percent. And boy, dicey area. Lows of Thursday. Lows of Friday. NASDAQ 100, 15,877. We're coming into jobs on Friday. You got Apple shares down more than a dollar this morning. Microsoft shares down almost uh, $5 this morning. Tesla shares down a few bucks as well. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be back with some of the equities that are moving this morning. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by 32 points right now. We jump over to Spotify. Spotify accelerating higher. They're going to be trimming that workforce, man, and the market likes it. They'll be saving some cash. Spotify, how about 1,500 jobs, right? They must be leaner is the message there, and the market likes that they'll be saving some costs. Uh, it's not immune to dramatically slowing economic growth. That's not what we hear. Be interesting to see if that actually persists as something we start hearing from more companies. 1,500 employees who will be told Monday. Kind of stinks this news comes out at like, so I guess it's got to come out ahead of time. Unfortunate day to be working at Spotify. You're talking about some one out of five workers. Yeah, and that's the third time that they've carried out mass layoffs this year in an effort to shrink costs. Boy, you talk about getting overextended. 1,500 jobs this time. Yeah, and they've been pushing in terms of adding people. They've been in the press with uh, the podcast deal with Rogan, all that stuff, right? Check it out. From 387 down to 70 bucks, and it's been a one-way trip to higher price. The market likes that they're trimming their workforce. They're up to almost 193 now, which you are going to be coming into in Spotify. I was looking. You're coming into an area of support that could prove to be an area of resistance, and that first area is 201, right? So call it 200. Nice round number. 201 was the lows in 2021 excuse me so yeah we'll see where that goes but nonetheless another company coming out with cuts okay let's talk a little bit of meta zuckerberg selling meta shares for the first time in a couple of years yeah i guess we'll get that that thing was on quite a trajectory got out of that channel line but still pushing higher now we're going to give up some of those gains today with this market continuing to accelerate to negative prices right now you got MetaShares off about $7. Now, this story, though, is about Zuckerberg selling for the first time in two years after a 172% surge in the stock, $180 million, $185 million of stock in November. And what's important to highlight here, right? So the trust, as well as entities for his charitable and political giving, unloaded almost 700,000 shares worth, almost $200 million in November, through trading plants. It's the first time entities that manage Zuckerberg's fortune have sold since 2001. He's regularly offloaded blocks of meta stock over the past decade, but didn't sell a single share in 2022. Okay, what happened to the plan? What about that plan they're talking about? Right? Through trading plans. Now, 
So here's the kicker that's worth highlighting here. I'm just reading through. So CEOs always put trading plans in place, right? And they can cancel them at any time. So it's horribly misleading that Zuckerberg's plan included no sales in this portion of the trading avenue. But when do they include portions to sell? In this portion. No, not even in this portion. You know what portion they include to sell in? Where's November? I can't even highlight it. There we go. That portion, right? So you're able to cherry pick areas that you may see overvaluation in equities. And I mean, check it out. He didn't sell a single share as part of his trading plan in 2000 and, is that right? Is that 22? Yeah, that's 22 right there. He didn't sell a single share in that portion of the chart. But you're supposed to believe that there's a trading plan in place so that he's not timing the market. Remember that one. It's just worth saying. Uh, because of course they're timing the market. They can change that plan at any time, and sometimes, okay, you can even put plans in place that basically start almost immediately. Pretty amazing when you look at that. Uh, he's back selling shares, can't fault him. I mean, look, at this thing came into COVID at 200. He wouldn't sell a single share below 200 when this thing traded below 200 in every month last uh, year besides January. At one point, it touched below 200. We wasn't going to do it. Interesting, nonetheless, right? Interesting is an interesting word. We'll put it that way. We'll jump a little bit of big picture as well. So this one, the billionaire tax rests on a disputed $14,729 refund at the Supreme Court. The headlines here, the subheadline, progressives see attacks on assets as easing the deficit. Inequality, justices will likely rule in the midst of a presidential campaign. Always nice getting some Supreme Court rulings to spice things up. Uh, a little bit of sarcasm, is, of course. Now, Democratic dreams of imposing a wealth tax on the richest Americans risk being snuffed out by the U.S. Supreme Court in a dispute over a $14,729 bill. Now, this has to do with taxing of assets versus taxing of wealth, right? Uh, a billionaire minimum tax, et cetera, to ease the federal deficit. I am all for taxing wealthier people at a higher level, okay? Excuse me. I know I sound so stuffed up. I'm doing great. No matter what I do, this nose, I just can't get it out, but I'll get it out soon. Might go for a little run later, try and get it out. Maybe a little, I don't know. Uh, now, what's interesting here, right, is that, folks, there's millions of ways that we could tax the wealthy without taxing wealth versus taxing income. Because if you're wealthy enough, you're going to be making a lot of money. And so you can tax income versus wealth. Uh, you got to close some of those loopholes. You got to do whatever you got to do. Um, excuse me, but nonetheless, and the Supreme Court, man, you know, the whole deal with Thomas coming down. Pretty interesting how that all shakes out for what it's worth. But, yeah, I don't imagine this one's actually going to happen because that's quite a fine line, right? Versus taxing income versus just taxing on assets. Nonetheless, we jump around. All right, what else we got? We talked about Virgin Galactic. We talked about Meta. Yeah, we got a little bit of airlines. We talked about Spotify and gold. Um, I mean, you know, it's pretty interesting in terms of you got COP28, right? Talking about climate change. You have the oil producers running it, talking about no science behind calls for a phase out of fossil fuels. And the, the bummer of this all is the truth lies somewhere in between. We're jumping around here. Truth always lies somewhere in between, man. People will get all upset about uh, our oil production and all this stuff, folks. Meanwhile, we're still using like 20 million barrels of oil a day. I think we're producing somewhere like 14 or 15. We're not even producing as much oil as we use, of course, because we get them from the Middle East, et cetera. Uh, but this whole thing is a mess. You got the thing taking place in Dubai, right? You got the United Arab Emirates climate chief suggesting fossil fuels phase out would not be allow um, allow sustainable development. That's obviously an argument that the truth does lie somewhere in between. Uh, but one of the big reasons you got crude, 
okay, pushing to these prices. I mean, Kevin Hanks talks about it when we speak to him, and it's so true. Nobody wants to talk about it. Democrats don't want to talk about the fact that, man, we are producing more oil than ever because they'll get on Greta's bad side out there. And Republicans don't want to talk about it because they'll have to face the reality that uh, Biden's not killing the oil market, which is what they love to say or something that thereof. Nonetheless, crude at 73.45. We jumped around a little big picture, but COP28, yeah, uh, quite an interesting one. All right, you talk about interesting, folks. We got quite a drop, man. Eight o'clock, things seemed like they were going okay. Not so much the case right now. We're looking weak, to say the least, for the open. We got three minutes and 20 seconds. We're coming back. You got the S&Ps at session lows. And where are we? We are literally two points away, less than two points away from that low of Friday's open, 4564. Stay tuned, we'll be right back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You're looking at an S&P basically at session lows. As I mentioned, so coming into the opening bell, you traded down to a low of 45.63. We were at 45.62.50 within half a point of where you were on Monday's open before you saw the market trade up almost 45 points. So we'll see if we can find a bid yet again. Uh, we will find out. Let's jump around. NASDAQ 100, you're off by almost a full percent. You actually get below Thursday and Friday's low on the open there. NASDAQ 100. 
could call it the weakest index, off more than a full percent right now. Dow off four tenths percent, Russell off three tenths percent. Crude off about 60 pennies, 73.49. We keep our eye on gold. Gold off $26, just like that, man. Crazy. Are we gonna get a hundred dollar pullback? Uh, who's who's buying gold last night at 21.52? Ouch, off almost $90 this morning from where we were at that price point. And you jump over and you got the dollar index. You got dollar strength, man. Dollar. 103.75. We got dollar strength. What do you got? You got a little bit of lower price and higher yield. So the higher yield, you're talking barely though. You're talking about 4.27. We were at maybe 4.22 in the 10 year. We're at 4.27% in the 10 year. We were above five, right? Three quarters of a percentage point is what we've seen pullback. So yes, a little bit higher price, but all things considered, there's your daily on the 10-year. Quite a break. Let's just see where we're talking about. We back up to that 382 yet? Well, we are. We're pushing the 50%. Now, this one's interesting, folks. Where were we talking about, right? 4607. I guess we should have traded it. Uh, we had this on the chart last week, man. And where did we touch on Friday? Look at that. Look at that, right? Absolutely remarkable that on the chart, and I haven't tweaked the numbers, man, 4607.61 was the one to sit 1.618 expansion of the rip move lower from about where that thing started to the day on October 17th to the 10 day run it had on October 27th. The one to 1 1.618 expansion brought you to 4607.61 and we made it to 4607. 75 within 14 pennies of where we were on Friday. And just like that, you're almost 40 S&P points off of that price level. So quite a turnaround, usually doesn't peg it to the penny, uh, but keep your eye on it. And the other one that we were talking about was potentially 46.34. So maybe there's your area. Maybe you're gonna face a little bit of resistance in this area as we go forward through December and come into the year end. But boy, we're getting a little bit of divergence here as you got the S&Ps catch a little bit of a bid. You have the NASDAQ 100 accelerate to lower price. You got the Russell actually climb to positive prices. And it looks like, uh, yeah, we got divergence in this market, man. Let's check back on gold. Gold hanging at about 2,066 right now. Let's check out the Magnificent 7. Apple off about 8 tenths percent right now. Microsoft, whoo, what's going on with Microsoft, man? That could be a little bit of a canary there in terms of, boy, there's been no stocks, stock stronger than Microsoft. You got it gapping away. We're off almost $7. You're off 1.8% from Microsoft. Amazon off 1.5% this morning. We talked about Tesla off 1.3% so far this morning. NVIDIA shares off by 2% this morning. Meta shares off by 2.9% this morning. And look at that, right? Let's see. Look at this. So Zuckerberg sold in November. November 1st was 300, I guess. Yeah, either way. Uh, MetaShares off by 3% to kick things off. Boy, watch out. We got the NASDAQ 100 accelerating a little bit lower. You jump over to Netflix off by 1.3. Disney off by 8 tenths percent. Let's see how the banks are doing. JP Morgan negative by 3%. Bank of America off by a percent. We got some airline movement as one of the stories out there going on. Alaska Air has agreed to buy Hawaiian Airlines for almost $2 billion. Let's bring that headline over. Why not? So Alaska agrees to buy Hawaiian Airlines, $1.9 billion deal. It, uh, it's going to have to go through the regulators who've taken a hard stance about mergers. They view as anti-competitive is how they phrase it there. But they're going to pay $18, and that's HA is their symbol, and they are trading higher. Not bad. Up 182%. Look at that, man. 18 bucks a share. And take on $900 million, million of its debt. They closed Friday at $4.86. How about that, man? Am I reading that right? I see. So the $1.9 billion deal... So check out how they do that. The company has a market cap of 250 million, but they gotta pay for the debt as well, as well as the company. And so it's almost eight times the value of what the company was trading at. Whew. 
Now, you talk about market timing. How's this one for you? You don't think they were watching this chart? 2021, 2022, 2023. You don't think this acceleration from 12 bucks to five over the course of June to November made that play out? I mean, you were trading it 18 bucks, uh, well over that at the beginning of 2022. Nonetheless, uh, you have Alaska taking them out $1.9 billion in Hawaiian. Now, keep in mind, it opens at 1380. The price is 18. So this thing is not done yet, as there's still a lot of risk premium priced in if it doesn't get done. You know, if it gets done, you make $4. If it doesn't get done, you lose $9. So what does that mean? That means there's almost a 70% chance this deal gets done, the market's pricing in, something like that, as the S&P finds a little bit of a bid on the open. All right. And what else do we have, folks? For two weeks, we are running our Tiger Dollar sale. And forgive me. There we go. If you head on over to the front page of TFNN, folks, the TFNN holiday Tiger Dollar sale, it's Monday. I talked about gold's making all-time highs. If you're planning on signing up for the gold report today, folks, okay, the way to do it is you go over to the front page of TFNN. You check out the Tiger Dollar holiday sale. You can get up to a 20, 30, or 40% bonus on whatever you spend. Okay, usually these deals are 10, 15, or 20%. We've doubled all the bonuses, okay? The 10 gets doubled to 20% bonus. The 15 gets doubled to a 30% bonus. And the 20 gets doubled to a 40% bonus at the highest level. You spend 1,500, you get 2,100 Tiger Dollars. You can use those for any newsletter, any webinar, any trading service that we do at TFNN, they never expire. You can transfer them to friends, to family. Uh, yeah, and we run these sales about twice a year. So don't miss it out. Head over, get some Tiger Dollars, uh, then go check out whatever newsletter you want, whether it's the Gold Report, whether it's one of Larry's live trading webinars he's been doing, whether it's Basil's opening call, right? All that stuff, folks. So we do two of these sales a year. This one ends... The weekend of December 15th, so that's not this coming weekend. We got two weeks, uh, but check it out. No reason to wait. It ends December 17th, and uh, yeah, check out those Tiger Dollars on the front page of TFNN. All right, what else do we got going on out here? Well, we'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about this. Morgan Stanley's Wilson, he's been on the wrong side, but he's still a bear, and he's looking for a little bit of volatility, potentially to the bearish side in December. Uh, we'll see. They talk a little bit of MACD momentum in there as well. Stay tuned, folks. S&P's off 26. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by about 26 points right now. NASDAQ 100 continuing to accelerate right now. Off by 1.1%. We put it back to a five-minute. You see, just making a low of 15,836 right now. And I'm jumping around a bit here. But I got a couple articles up here I want to pull. They touch on some of what we've been talk, talking about. All right. First, let's talk talk a little bit of space, right? These are just wild things when you see them happen. So Branson's not putting any more money in this thing. The market says, oh boy, that's not good. We talked about how you get up to 60, 280. Let's see if, when did Branson go into space? What was the date? Does maybe somebody know? Uh, June of 2023. You got to love it. Okay, right here. Uh, first commercial space flight was June 2023, I believe. And that was the first commercial space flight. Okay, the point being. So check out the article I was thinking about. Pay attention when you see headlines like this if they ever come in the future, folks, okay? This is from March of 2021, okay? There's March. I'm trying to remember whether I think that was early on, that February, that was the race to get into... F I got to get these dates because they're, they're too... So he went in July of 2021 is when Branson did. Okay. Uh, nonetheless, we get back to the Chimath artic article. He took the company public in 2019, and it was reported in March of 2021 that he dumped his entire personal stake. He's the chairman. The chairman of the company that took it public dumped his entire personal stake worth almost a quarter billion dollars prior to them going public, okay? They mentioned he owned almost 16 million shares indirectly through social capital, uh, blah, 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 holdings. Who knows what kind of financial games got played since then, by then, who, what was going on there. I would doubt that they, those 16 million shares just got held till Branson was out, okay? But look at the type of money you're talking about, man. He sold 6.2 million shares. Stock's trading at $2 right now. 
Those shares are worth $12 million today. What did he get? Almost a quarter billion dollars, 213 million. You ever see a, uh, a founding member and chairman of a company selling their entire personal stake? Get out of Dodge ASAP, right? Uh, and they mentioned he still indirectly owns, I mean, who knows what's going on with some of the financial games. Uh, the best part about this article, come on, where's the quote? Because he is a PR genius, okay? Yeah, here it is. Why is he doing this? Why is the chairman selling it? It sounds so cynical, okay? We're not gonna, but these are investment lessons, man, that only come from experience, okay? Because he has got quite a following, right? He was the, the SPAC pioneer, okay? He still has quite a following. And this guy is fleecing everybody left and right, okay? He sells all the shares, he's the chairman, he's the founder, he sells them at a level, I mean, what is that? Above 30 bucks, at least? If you're talking about 6.2 million shares, I mean, what is it exactly? What did he get? 213 divided by 6.2. He got $35 a share for this equity, man. 35. You want to see how often it traded above $35? How about timing the market, man? Right? He's no fool. He didn't try and peg it at the $62 high. He just made sure he got out well above where it should be trading. Look at that. Look above 35, right? Irrational highs, to say the least. He gets out, sells it all. But the best part is, why is he selling? Why is he selling? He has to tell everybody why he's selling. Well, folks, he's sell selling, and these are my words, to save humanity, which is basically what he says, into a large investment I'm making towards fighting climate change, folks. The details of this investment, they're going to be made to the public in, in the next few months. I'm going to tell you about how I'm going to fight climate change. But just right now, that's why I'm selling all my money in this space. You know. So for what it's worth, man, those articles, I remember them coming out and going, what the heck is going on, man? How is this guy selling all those shares? Because remember, folks, if he owns all those shares, you can take a loan on those shares. You don't have to sell them. Well, he sold them, and the stock's at $2. Uh, yeah. So anytime. Insider trading, very real, okay, across the board in terms of, uh, yeah, same as FTX, right? He bought himself a lot of time by telling everybody that he was going to donate a billion dollars to this cause, a billion dollars to that cause across the board. Ah, wild stuff, man. And it, at the time that it's happening, not enough people ask enough questions. And, you know, Chamath's still got a following that is beyond belief when you think about selling out at $35 of that company. And meanwhile, two years later, it's at $2. And Branson's like, I'm not giving you any more cash. And the company's worth less than a billion dollars. I mean, look at the whole company right now is, what did I just say, $700 million or something like that? $800 million for 400 million shares. He cashed out 6 million shares and got what would have been 25% of the company right now. Yeah, wild stuff after uh, hindsight, of course, 2020, but wild stuff nonetheless. On the geopolitical spectrum, uh, boy, not good headlines coming out over the weekend, man. A U.S. destroyer and commercial vessels were attacked by drones and missiles in the Red Sea. The Iran-backed Houthis? Houthis? Uh, forces in Yemen claim responsibility, pointing to Israel's Gaza war. I mean, can you keep track of all the stuff going on in that in that one sentence, right? You have the Iran-backed forces in Yemen pointing to Israel's Gaza war, and then the Pentagon warns of possible response. Of course, not the headlines you want to see. Uh, so say some prayers, send some white light out, because whether you're talking about the market or you're talking about humanity, sketchy stuff, to say the least. All right. Boy, this is not looking good on the NASDAQ 100, man. Amazon off 2.2% right now. Apple off more than a full percent. Microsoft, but look at these numbers, right? Amazon's off more than two. Microsoft's off 2.7. Apple's off more than a full percent right now. Netflix shares off more than a full percent at 1.4%. NVIDIA shares, 3%. Be careful. Let's check out bonds. You got the 10-year right now. Yeah, no real huge move. We're right back to where we were just in about 9 o'clock when we started off the program. Let's check back in on that gold contract. Gold's kind of saving itself of uh, the low kind of open on Friday. We're right back to where we were at about 10 o'clock in the morning on Friday. You accelerated higher on Friday. You accelerated on that futures open to 21.52. Interesting stuff, to say the least. We check on crude. Well, we can all appreciate lower prices at the pump. I mean, I don't get it, man. You know. Biden takes so much heat, right, for all the oil. 
and then oil's pushing a 70 handle and no one wants to talk about it about politics very divisive these days all right we got one more segment folks don't forget about the tiger dollar sale we got a three minute break i'm coming back to finish up the show in those three minutes you can get yourself a 20 30 or 40 percent bonus on your tiger dollars you go check out the gold report you check out the opening call you check out uh any newsletter we got at tfnn folks my newsletter rocket equities and options stay tuned folks we'll be right back the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Interesting divergence right across the board going on. They're talking about in the Tiger's Den. If you haven't checked out the Tiger's Den, folks, if you're over there watching us on YouTube, good morning. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com for TigerFinancialNewsNetwork.com, TFNN.com. You can sign up for the Tiger's Den. It's a dollar for the year, folks. We just make sure we validate everybody's uh, identity. We keep scammers out of there. We keep spammers out of there. The whole deal uh, check it out. It's a dollar for the year, man. We got a great community. They're talking about, boy, you talk about the Magnificent Seven, right? Uh, little divergence, quite the pop on the S&Ps, especially when you look at what the NASDAQ 100 just did, right? You take a look at the NQ, it was all negative prices. Now we're bouncing off the low of 15,823. We're still off by a full percent right now. But as I went through those numbers, catching a little bid right there. Amazon only off 1.7% right now, but Microsoft off 2.3%. Nvidia off 2.6. They hit 3% on the dot there. On the dot there for Nvidia shares. 
yeah, interesting stuff to say the least. We jump over to Tesla shares. Look at Tesla. They're back to positive territory, 239. Tesla up by a tenth of a percent so far. Let's see how the car companies are trading. Look at Ford catching a bit up by 1.2. GM up by 1.8% right now. Let's see how the phone companies. Verizon pull it back. It's been on quite a tear, man. Um, Verizon, maybe that was the low, 30 bucks. You know, you break out of that channel line, it's been quite a break to $38 for Verizon. T-Mobile pushing 143, quite the acceleration there. AT&T, yeah, they might have broken out of it too. Quite the acceleration for those phone companies. s and is off by 26 right now. It's a wild day, to say the least, and we're only 26 minutes into the trading day. We jump over to yields. Yeah, pretty much where we started off the program. 110.14 right now, and what are we going to finish up the program with? Gold. Gold off $20. Yeah, get ready for some volatility, though, man. These are one-minute bars. Gold up $7 in the last 12 minutes. The day is young, folks. You're going to see some volatility in gold. Gold at 2069, making new all-time highs. Is there a better day to check out the gold report, folks, than new all-time highs on a Monday when you got a new issue and you got a Tiger Dollar sale? It's a great day to check out any newsletter at TFNN, including the opening call of our man Basil Chapman, who's coming up next, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow at 9 in the morning. Have a